everything here in Belgrade is linked to the war. But very good. It's the socialist architecture, brutalist architecture. Guys, look at this view over there. It's maybe the second time I see snow this year. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel! It's been a while since my last international vlog and I'm so excited to take you with me today because we're in Belgrade, Serbia. And you can notice actually that the view behind my back is pretty different from the Italian view. The weather more so is even more different because it's April and apparently it's the Balkan spring. It's super cold here today, but I'm still very excited to take you with me and to discover the city together. It's the first time for me here and yeah, I'm pretty excited. So without further ado, if you're ready, let's go with me. Let's discover this very interesting city together with very interesting history and culture and cuisine. We're gonna eat something very special today. Before we begin, guys, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. And so now we can start. Belgrade is a city with an incredibly long, complicated and tragic history. It counts more than 2,000 years and it has been under the Celts, Romans, Slavs, Ottomans and Austrians at different times. Belgrade often passed from Ottoman to Habsburg rule and was frequently destroyed during the Austro-Ottoman Wars. The city was battled over 115 times and razed to the ground 44 times. In 20th century alone, Belgrade was bombed three times during both world wars and in, most recently in 1999. Still to this day, there are places that keep memory of those events and not by chance Belgrade is known as the White Phoenix. Guys, there are so many cool, interesting shops here all over the city. This one, for example, is the oldest Serbian bookshop and it looks amazingly. I don't know if we can uh, film inside. We will try probably, but I have to tell you, it looks amazingly. I mean, this is such an underrated city with so many cool places and so many secrets to discover and to find out. I mean, I love it already. Look, guys, there is a degustation point. There is nobody here. So I think I will not try any of this, but they're just exposed like these different liquors, honey and, oh, raspberry and walnut. And, oh, actually we can probably try something. Hi. It's quite good. It's um, it's a raspberry liquor and it's pretty soft. It's not a very strong alcoholic beverage. There is the one you can try that is very strong. However, we have a whole day of shooting ahead, so nothing strong for me today. But this one is really good, and obviously I couldn't avoid trying a raspberry liquor. Cheers, um, guys. The liquor was good. However, for you to know something, just general information, it cost me four euros to try just uh, one uh, shot of this liquor, which probably, okay, well, it was one shot, so technically, yes, I mean, four euros, but uh, it cost more than it would have cost me in Italy, to be honest, and I, I thought initially that it was kind of a degustation, and you could try maybe way less, not an entire shot, but different types of it. 
However, just so that you know, another thing for you to know, another tip is that uh, here the locals would accept euros and they would actually tell you the price in euros and then they would give you back the change in the local uh, currency. I'm not really sure if it's uh, convenient. I don't think so. But so just you know, you do not have to change the currency and some places like this will not accept card. Which, if you know me, guys, if you've been here for a while, you know that I hate it when I cannot pay with card because I almost never carry cash on me. So carry some cash and know that you can pay in euros, but you'll get change in local currency. Guys, this street uh, in front of me is the famous uh, Skadarska street, which is the uh, Bohemian quarter, Bohemian district of uh, Belgrade, the cultural heart of the city. I personally like it. I want to walk all over the street, but I can already spot these cute historical buildings. Here's the thing. Obviously, due to its very complicated and quite recent communist past, Belgrade is uh, heavily, still heavily in influenced by the socialist uh, past, the socialist architecture, brutalist architecture. I personally hate it. I know some people like it. I hate it, honestly. But I already like this district because you can spot these historical buildings which reflect, in my opinion, the culture and the history of the nation much better than the other side of the city. Can you, can you just show the other side in these buildings that are, you know, they just lack character, they lack personality, they lack everything. But look, look here once again, it's totally different. So you have to look for these cute spots, but there are some in this city and I like it. So far, I can see lots of restaurants here. I would love to see more of art galleries, probably. Maybe there will be more now with, as we continue walking around this uh, district. Uh, however, what I've been thinking that probably when it's warmer or maybe in the evening there are more people. Now it's quite deserted, this street, but still it's cute. The restaurants are cute and everything, but I wish there were more people and I wish there were more artsy places, but still it's nice and the architecture is really cute here. Here in the Central Street there are more people because before where we were in this really nice area it felt so empty and it was a bit, well yeah, I mean, today's a work day but still it felt a bit weird to me uh, because, you know, Belgrade is definitely worth a visit but I wouldn't say there are too many tourists. Compared to other Eastern European capitals like Bucharest, for example, there aren't as many tourists which is a surprise to me because it's a really nice city with an impressive history and so many things to see and discover and to try. So yeah, at least here there are more people. By the way, guys, speaking of Bucharest, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to go there and film it for you. I really love that underrated capital and I would love to show it to you as well. So make sure to like this video and comment if you want me to go there and film it for you. Guys, this bookshop is a dream for every pop culture fan. I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars, don't hate me for that. However, I'm a huge fan of Marvel Cinematic Universe and I can see a bunch of things here. I love it, it's so cute actually.
most importantly, inside this bookshop, there is a coffee shop as well. And you can have coffee without even leaving this amazing bookshop. Another thought about the lack of tourists here, I do not understand it. Maybe it's somehow linked to this horrendous weather, although now it's becoming a little bit warmer. But um, here in Belgrade, you can find information about the city. On every step there are maps and there is this information. And look here, there is even the Braille's um, alphabet. That's amazing. I mean. This city is so ready to welcome you, to welcome tourists. Guys, I highly recommend you to visit it. Time for lunch, guys, and also time to warm up a little bit. And I want to try this place that is called question mark. That is, it doesn't have an actual name. This is the name. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Let's try it. I hope it's open. Yeah, it is open. Let's go with me. This place is very, very authentic and lovely. The atmosphere here is incredible. And you can try the most typical things here, the typical food, typical cuisine. I've ordered uh, different things. Well, we've ordered different things. I have my whole team here with me. And I want to try several of them and I will show you what to try when you're in Serbia. So the first thing I'll be trying today is this beef soup. And uh, beef is actually a huge part of Serbian cuisine. So if you eat beef, it's good news for you. I also want to try this bread because it looks absolutely amazing. Look at this bread, guys. My team is actually now behind the camera looking at me impatiently because they want to eat. But camera eats first and it just happens so that I'm in front of the camera so I also eat first. Mm. The bread is very, very good. Together with this soup, it tastes even better. Mm. And we also got this, which is called Slivovica, and this is the kind of uh, plum liquor, typical Serbian plum liquor, so cheers once again, guys. By the way, I absolutely forgot to tell you that this country is famous for raspberries, so raspberry liquor that I tried before was an obvious choice for me, but now I want to try this one, which is another typical thing. It's way stronger than the raspberry one, and it's also very, very good with this very soft plum taste. And yeah, it's really delicious. The first thing I'm trying today is pleskavica, which is this kind of uh, beef cutlet made with onion. And it smells so good. I will leave you both the name of this thing also because I'm not really sure that I'm pronouncing it right. I think I'll probably write it down here. And I will obviously link you the link to all the places that I visit today. Guys, it smells incredibly. Let's try it. It's so tender, you have no idea. Very tasty and very, very tender. I highly recommend you to try this thing. As I said, the local cuisine is quite heavy, obviously. It's based on beef and things. So if you want something a little bit more tender, try this one. Hmm. Another thing that I'm trying today is this, and it's called chivaptic. These are this beef uh, meat roulettes, beef roulettes. And let's try this. Looks so good. Smells incredibly. Mmm. Mmm. It's incredibly hot. It's also very good. It's a little bit less tender than the other one, but so good as well. You can try any of this. 
Bows are very typical, bows are very Serbian and I love bows, honestly. I don't know which one I prefer. The Turkish influence here, guys, is so strong that you even have this traditional coffee that is served with lokum. And also this thing is made of walnuts and it also tastes very oriental to me, but very good. Mm. Incredible. The whole restaurant is located inside um, an axe house. I suppose it looks like once a house. And here you have this internal courtyard, which is absolutely lovely. Everything is just so, so authentic, both inside and outside. And the food was really amazing. Both the main dishes and the desserts, everything was incredibly good. And we are so, so full. Luckily, we got a few dishes to share and try everything because well, we don't eat that much and uh, if you don't eat much and if you're not used to eating red meat, guys, I recommend you maybe to share or just to be careful with um, what you order because the portions are quite big and you end up being so, so full after lunch or dinner here. Everything is just so good. You will not be able to stop eating, I swear. And the desserts, what I loved particularly is, as I said before, this oriental influence everything is just so heavily influenced by um you know serbian's ottoman past it's incredible how uh, this mix of cultures was born here a mix of eastern european a mix of uh, ottoman and balkan and all of it together is a it's a real melting pot i loved it guys what can i say we are so happy after this lunch we are ready to keep exploring belgrade Guys, look at this view over there. I love this uh, modern contemporary architecture, not as much as I love the historical one, but this one is also quite good. Come here, let's have a closer look. Guys, look at these cute chess boards. Just imagine playing chess with the view here, although probably only one person would be playing chess with the view, while the other one would be with the back turned back to the view. But now, well, you know, at least one of you will enjoy the view while playing chess here. Everything here in Belgrade is linked to the war. Even inside the castle, there is a military museum. And, well, I think, you know, you cannot really erase this recent past and you cannot forget this recent past, so I totally understand it. However, it's, uh, you know, I have a very weird feeling seeing all these military uh, things here exposed like this. But, you know, this castle is actually the Serbian symbol of rebirth, basically, because it's been destroyed several times under different rules and it's been completely destroyed and then rebuilt and then destroyed and rebuilt once again. And I feel like, obviously, you know, it's, it's a symbol of this city and it's a symbol, of, uh, it's a symbol of, of this nation, probably, of how this nation has been erased and then born once again. Not by chance it is called the White Phoenix because Belgrade means literally the white city so yeah you know having the history of being a phoenix literally it makes sense to be called the white phoenix but honestly you have goosebumps looking at all this military stuff here Guys, if you can see, uh, there is a drinking fountain and it is one of the numerous symbols of the Ottoman legacy here. Uh, because, as I said previously, the Ottoman influence was huge here. Uh, actually, Serbia and Belgrade in particular was a part of one of uh, Sanjak's, the regions of the Ottoman Empire. And Ottoman governors were coming here to uh, oversee this place, obviously. So. You can find these uh, remains of the Ottoman heritage all around the city 
and in, in particular around the castle. This drinking fountain is known as the drinking fountain of uh, Pasha Mehmed Sakalovic, which was uh, a Serbian man brought to Istanbul, I suppose. And then when he um, became a famous politician, he became uh, a Pasha, he became a, a governor, he became a governor of Belgrade as well. And look, I think this is mesmerizing that you can still find these signs of Ottoman architecture and it's blending with the typical Eastern European architecture and then it's blending with even more architectural styles. And it all says just how international the city used to be and how many different uh, rules and how many different people it's seen over its long history. This is absolutely incredible. Yes, what's even cooler, in my opinion, is that this fountain is still functioning. Look! Wow, that's history that you can literally touch and even drink from it, I suppose. According to another urban legend, under this castle there is an entire underground uh, city and it is said that it can host up to 1,000 people inside as a defensive construction in some of the corridors of this underground city can be accessed today. Um, anyway, the castle is located in the old city, but there is also the new city, the new Belgrade, uh, where you can find all these amazing, uh, you know, skyscrapers and different modern buildings. And it's amazing because you can see uh, these two faces of the city, one with its history and one hopefully with its future, with Belgrade uh, developing and growing and evolving into a modern capital. Well, in Bologna, it's already so warm in April that I've already had a picnic in the hills wearing like a, a sports top, something like that. Here in April, there is still snow. It's probably, yeah, it's maybe the second time I see snow this year. <laughs> and it's in April. Guys, it's so cold here today, I have no idea. The whole castle is surrounded by amazing grounds, amazing park, and I think when the weather is better, it could be a perfect place for a picnic or for a walk uh, because it's large and there, there is everything, you know, there are these uh, archaeological remains, there are several museums inside the castle and on these grounds, there are so many interesting sites here and I think it could be an absolutely perfect place, an absolutely perfect natural site for you to enjoy, for uh, locals to enjoy. And also, speaking of how amazing this place is, look at the view. You can have everything and even enjoy this absolutely spectacular view from here. I love this place so much. It's probably my favorite place in Belgrade today. Just look here, guys. And that's it guys, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this video. I love this city and I hope that I've managed to show it to you and hopefully to inspire you to come visit Belgrade because it's such an underrated city, such an underrated capital. And I feel like more tourists should come here because as I said a million times today, this city is so ready to welcome more tourists with so many amazing historical sites, with great food, with this rich culture, history, architecture, everything. You should absolutely come see it for yourselves. There are plenty of things to do here and I'm pretty sure that you're going to enjoy it. Uh, having said that, guys, if you're new here, once again, I remind you to subscribe and hit the bell button down below. And please don't forget to like, comment and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you'll get to visit this city. I hope you get to travel more and please enjoy your day.